this morning I had a major realization about audio recordings and about fidelity and about the analog digital crossover. And it was very basically um, that what we're hearing in recordings a lot of the time is actually the microphone. So even though some of that stuff is coming from mixing desks and mixing boards, a lot of that occurred in post, um, meaning that the microphone happened first because it had to. So this was prior to like heavy electronic gear where you could just go directly into a board. And when it comes to guitars, they were actually performing the guitar into a speaker and the speaker is being recorded by the microphone. So this solves a mystery for me at least about the fidelity factor. And so my thinking is basically the main conditions of fidelity, aside from the white noise and electrical stuff and the, 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 the noise factor of the signal that creates a small amount of fidelity in some ways, in addition to the, the mixing desks that were analog and all these things, each one increasing the amount of fidelity. The big, another big takeaway is the, the reverberation of the room, the speaker, and lastly, the microphone. And so, essentially, what I'm trying to get around to saying is, if you have a very high fidelity microphone, or a high quality microphone, and it has all this gear inside of it to create this phenomenal sound, and if you, if you listen to the tube mics, and if you listen to the, the characteristics that they can place on um, anything, but especially voices and things like that, and you would, you would, you would see why you know, people obsess over them not only in the production uh, world, but you know, on stage, and also this, the also the uh, actual artists themselves. You know, they swear by the mics of, that they love. For instance, you know, Michael Jackson was an incredible singer, incredible voice, but he had a distinct sound, especially when coupled with certain kinds of microphones, where he could play to the microphone as well. At least from what I've uh, researched. So the long story short here is another very important component of fidelity, because I always research all this stuff from many vantage points to try to you know, improve my own skills and understanding of things, is that the, if you're using a $5,000 microphone, where they, it's like they sent people to outer space at the same time that they're making these incredibly expensive microphones. And so there was a level of attention to detail that it doesn't occur in the optimized era of, let's say, prosumerism, where prosumerism is basically about getting to the meat and the potatoes of things, but you do skimp. And so the skimp is like the efficiency that has to happen because of the profit incentive. So the profit systems of the world diminish the product, and they did it like incrementally, but they did retain some aesthetics of the product because they had to, to be able to still sell the product as high quality or whatever. But we all know that, you know, a lot of material was made overseas and no one's really seeing what's going on there. And so essentially what I'm saying is that the quality and the care and the TLC, you know, it still exists in pockets, but as the norm, um, it's a different factor. It's a different you know, way of looking at the market these days. And really, that's why all of the fringe companies that make these cheaper products, they have swarms and swarms of masses of people who will spend a few hundred dollars less to get a product that claims it can do what a much higher end product can do. So what I learned also is that if you buy, if you want to buy a high end computer, you know, there's certain things you don't skimp on. And that's why I've been an Apple user you know, my, my whole life, or at least during the most of my professional years. And I've always been, that, that the Apple has never not delivered on what it said it was going to do. So there's been trouble, and there's been tri tribulations and whatnot, but it's delivered, and, it, and then it surpassed everything I could ever want from it because of the new developments of technology and software and AI and algorithms and on and on. So now I, it's even a case of just keeping up with how much power these things actually can produce. So, and I can't, and no one can, because it's just like every time you, you, just, you just catch up, it just has an exponential jump. These guys are working, guys and girls are working very hard behind the scenes to continue to develop this stuff. 
So anyways, I just wanted to mention that about the microphone. I think that's one thing that's overlooked. And I think that if you wanted to chase one other element in fidelity, um, then I think that the, the place to, to look is the microphone because we think about the things that are being recorded and a lot of the high-end engineers, they're going to record everything through the microphones, especially if they have an expensive mic. So in other words, why would you not, if you know that it sounds great, and then why would you not just run anything you could possibly run? That's why you have people who were very wise who decided not to just plug the keyboard into the mixer, but to plug the keyboard into a speaker and then record the speaker with a microphone. Because they, what they also claim is the warmth of the speaker, which it is, um, and you're getting this additional kick. Um, so it's kind of like you're buttering something with little, little layers of butter, you know, each, each layer, so that it's, it doesn't quite hit you all at once, and it keeps it fresh, and it keeps it stimulating. And so that's where this saturation creep, where if you just turned up a saturation knob, it just doesn't sound good. But if you slowly modulate it in through the processes and through the signal chains, then you're going to get a nice, you know, really rich form of saturation. So that's all I'm getting at with this idea about chasing down microphone fidelity as a means of superimposing fidelity into um, mixes and masters. And another thing is that because of convolution technology, you can somewhat just superimpose this microphone signature, this characteristic, this, this curve that it has into many styles of recordings without actually having to do the work of setting it up. Now, it's still missing some components of the circuitry, and so I don't see how it could quite facilitate the same effect, you know, especially when you, get, when you get into the responsiveness of them. So, anyways, that's just a thought, and I'm sure that it's like being utilized uh, already, it just, uh, it just happened to, to occur to me, the significance that's not really talked about, which is the fidelity of the microphone, besides the fidelity of the speakers, besides the fidelity of the instruments and the cords, um, so the, the cables and all these things, besides all these, these different um, aspects that are contributing each, each part of this fidelity uh, pyramid, you also have this last stop which is the microphone, which then gets driven to another last stop, which is the uh, mixing console in some cases, where it can go through even more sweetening. But in reality, some of that's going to bring out more of the characteristic of the microphone. So again, we're, we're talking about if you just keep focusing on this microphone aesthetic, then you're looking into this idea of chasing you know, what these guys were after, which was creating incredible recording devices, and they did. You know, and so that's why, for instance, when you record acoustic guitar, sometimes it can have a real boxy sound, but sometimes it's like really brilliant and smooth and silky. And so what's happened is there is, is that there's been a synthesis of the acoustic, you know, environment uh, going into the mic and then the mic saying, hey, nope, there's no pass on this. So if you have like ribbon mics and and condenser mics and you know cardioid and all these kinds of things pointing in this certain kind of sphere of sound, um, and then your your different levels of uh, you know sweetening within the microphone itself, all these intricacies, um, you know so many stops along those channels. So I'll cut it off there. I'm kind of rambling at this point, but mics are the last uh, another another aspect of you know this fidelity um, hunt. Check, 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 check that. And so what I wanted to also get at with this is if you think about the crossover between digital and analog where people were complaining about the digital sounding stale, that's because they were going direct in without getting any of the sweetening from the microphone. 